guys, Jerry Berg, the Poor Historian here, and I am giving you a new HEMA product review video, and that is of this right here, the Hanwei Hutton uh, saber for sparring. So, this is going to be an odd review, it's going to be really a two-parter, uh, one where I give the review before I've actually even fenced with it, this is, this is my justification for it. Uh, and you'll understand why later, and then the second part after I fenced with it. Um, but beforehand, I do want to clarify that the, this, along with the cold steel training saber, are essentially the economic, uh, you know, the, the low-cost sparring sabers that are out there. Everything else is at least $100 higher than you can get these. Um, they go, or this one, the Hanway Hutton, uh, you can find as low as, uh, I believe... 120 more or less, um, including shipping, but that's if you really dig for it. The majority of them you can get for 140, 150 uh, in shipping on top of that. So, <laughs> when I was, I got, I got this one used for 90 total, including shipping, and that was from a personal uh, purchase, not not something that I can go on eBay and, and say, oh, you can go and find it you know, on eBay or Amazon or Etsy or anything like that. Um, so search around, see if you can get a good deal. That is, however, if you want to get one of these. So to, when I was searching for, uh, I, I was looking for either a Hanway Hutton or the Cold Steel Training Saber. They look fairly similar. They're based on the same uh, style of training sword or gymnasium saber, as it's called. And oh, <laughs> I'm the poor historian. I, I like saving money. I like spreading that knowledge to others who might have difficulties getting the funds to do some of these expensive hobbies. And no nowhere, nowhere in the uh, hemo sparring community have I found more people so averse to getting these sabers. And most of the time they say two or three things. Um, so I'm going to pass that on to you. Uh, I also want to say if you agree with these, and you are simply going to comment on this video saying, yep, don't get them, they stink. Try to go a little bit more in depth and share your own personal experiences with it instead of just these generic, yep, don't get them statements, which are just everywhere. So the issues that most people have said are, one, they do not flex very much uh, when you when you thrust, and so I'm going to push my push against my hand, hopefully it won't hurt too bad. Yeah, and that's about, ow. that's about the maximum that you're going to get. It does not bend that much. It does bend, you know, it's a flex temper. So it is going to bend a bit, but I bet you a lunge is really going to hurt with these things. The other thing that people have said is that after sparring with it for a bit, the blade takes a set, meaning the blade bends one way or another, and it's difficult to get it back or, or expensive to get it back. Um, you know, bending one way or another. And with synthetic, that's fine because you can just heat it up and flatten it out again and you're good to go. But with steel, it's going to take a lot more effort to fix. And the last thing people have said that they've had the blades snap on them, uh, it, meaning break in the middle of sparring, which of course can lead to very dangerous situations. Those are fairly common. Most people are very opposed to either this, the Hanway Hutton, or the cold steel version, the cold steel training saber. Um, I've seen them everywhere. I wanted to try this out myself because this, like I said, this is the economic version. This is the, the low-cost sparring saber out there. So that's what I found. My own personal experience, the only thing that I've been able to find out is that the blade is fairly stiff. It does bend. You get thrust in the neck with this thing, it's going to hurt. Um, but personally, my biggest issues are with the hilt here. Uh, so firstly, if you want to take a look at this, this guard here, this cup guard, it actually sounds really bad. You can kind of hear it sounds almost tin. Uh, I know it's not. You know, it's fairly solid steel. It's going to protect your hand, but just the quality of it is just like punched out um, steel sheeting bent in a, in a certain shape. I don't know if that's necessarily a bad thing, because I know going into this that this is the economic version. So I don't know if I'm really too worried about that. I mean, it's, it's going to protect your hand from lots of hits. It just kind of was something I wasn't expecting to have that low, low quality feel to it. Um, but my biggest problem, and maybe you guys have seen this problem with it as well, is the grip here. 
Look at how thin this is. I have big hands, okay? And I'm going to suffer from this problem more than the average person. But when I try to grip this, it's so tiny in my hand. It, it just, I can't even get a good grip with it. I've been uh, doing some drills, some molinates and stuff like that. Molinette, molinier. Another video. But every time I try to do some, some uh, drills with it, I get a horrible hand cramp. It's horrible. I've seen people put some electric tape or tennis racket tape around the handle to build it up, but I've got a better idea in mind, and that's why this is a two-part sparring video. Before I continue, and I'll probably make a video on this guy by itself later, I did pick up recently an original gymnasium saber, sparring saber. I wanted to do a quick comparison. The blades of the original, which is probably late 1800s, the blade is a good three or four inches longer than the Hanwei one. Um, the grip, remember I was saying how the grip was seemed low quality. This grip, even though it's 100 years old, is a nice solid steel. I feel, I feel very comfortable with it. Commenting on the size of the grip, I think the original actually had that problem too because whoever had this somewhere in its history actually wrapped additional padding around the grip to make it bigger. So I'm wondering if this isn't necessarily a manufacturing issue, just more of just an issue with the small grip in general. But the last thing is that the originals, when you, the blade is way bendier, much, much bendier um, than, than the replica here. So I'm not sure what, I'm not sure why they didn't make it more bendy. Maybe they were trying to balance between rigidity uh, or between uh, durability and flexible blades, but the original was much better. By the way, I've never touched, never used that original um, for anything. Maybe light, light drill, but never sparring. I love that thing. Um, back to it. Here's my plan to fix this. Here's the best part. The best part, in my opinion, of the Hanway Hutton is, look at that right there, that is a little nut that holds the hilt and the guard and the blade all together. And if you've seen my poor historian review videos, you know that normally a nut on the end of a, uh, of a hilt means a, a low quality replica, low quality historical replica. But in this case, the blade is all that I'm worried about. So, and this is gonna, I'm teaching a Civil War based saber combat class coming up in September. I'm really excited about that. Um, so here's my plan with it. I picked up this sword recently. I really don't need to do a review on it. It's a very low quality um, model 1860 light cavalry saber, which frequently officers in the Civil War would use instead of their own officer's saber because this was uh, provided by the military and the officer's saber, the infantry officer's saber, had to be a private purchase. In theory, I haven't looked into that one too much. But nonetheless, frequently used by Union Civil War officers, but again, there's that nut. So what am I going to do? I'm going to take this horrible, cramp-inducing, tiny hilt off of this saber, take the blade, and put it on the hilt of this one. I foresee a few issues with this. Um, the hilts don't seem to be too different in length, so I'm not too worried about it going through. But the big issue that I see is this angle at the bottom here, whereas this one this one does not have an angle in the tang. They're both threaded. Um, there's also possible issues with um, um, metric sizing systems, um, but we'll see about that later. <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I can easily replace the nut if I need to. Nonetheless, that is the end of what I want to do for the first part, and I want to clarify the pre-combat review. We'll do another one later with a post-combat review when I attach it to a hilt that will actually fit my hands. Alright, take care. Until next time.